Okay, I'll tell you how to kill controllers. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. I Porting team. I have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but you're Porting team. so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Hello? Hello? Stalker is now a console game. And not just the upcoming Stalker 2, but the original trilogy is now playable on consoles thanks to the work of GSC and a porting team in Poland called Matabu, Matabo, Matabo, that you might recognize from Chernobylite. But should you play it on the console? Just because it exists doesn't mean you should play, right? As usual, the answer depends on the scenario. But the answer is actually yes, every single time. Love Stalker and already own it in physical, on Steam, on GOG, then yes, you should probably own it on the consoles too. And who are we kidding? You probably already do. If you've never played Stalker, well, pop in sometime! We can be fun around here! Of course you should, the series is a must play. Take your time at first though, but stick with it because even though it starts slow, before you know it, you'll be begging for more. And finally, if you've already played them on PC and are just wondering whether or not this is a good reason to play the original trilogy again, then yes, because playing on the TV with a controller puts you in a position where you play a little bit differently. It brings back a little bit of novelty through a new learning curve which will lead to many of the zone's mysteries unraveling in a fresh new way. At least they did for me. So for all scenarios, yes, the trilogy belongs in your console library. And I'll tell you why. Spoiler free. When I asked you guys what you thought the most popular concern regarding Stalker 2 was, after the game not being finished in time, came the concern that its existence on consoles would hold back the experience on PC. But it goes both ways. Stalker is a very PC-centric game, not just in how it demanded certain hardware to run back in its day, but also in how it's meant to interface with the player through systems that are designed for keyboard and mouse. Inventory management, PDA navigation, saves, you get the idea. Stalker originally came out during the 7th generation. The PS3 and 360 would have probably not run it very well. Think Crisis. It didn't run on consoles as intended, and as a matter of fact, it was made to run on consoles for the later sequels on an updated engine, which arguably compromised the PC version's highly PC-tailored nature. And when the original was ported over to the consoles, it was again made to run on consoles and was highly compromised in performance, features, and interfacing. Showing that the concern for conflict between PC and console ports goes both ways. Console players can end up being the ones shafted. So the concerns for Stalker 2 are if one of the two platforms will be the one compromising. Are the PC guys getting Crisis 2? Or are the console guys getting Crisis 1? But if you ask me now, I don't think we have the same console culture anymore. Things have changed so much. Say what you will about the lack of 9th gen games. The Xbox Series X is an outstanding piece of hardware. The, the things you can do with it truly impress me. And uh, that's coming from a PC guy. See right there. This feels like a console that was made for PC players. Not only does it have keyboard and mouse support, but you can also take games that you played on PC and carry over the progress on the console, which is great. And there's other, a whole bunch of really cool features that I do use a lot, uh, but that's a topic for another video. I think the point is that the Series X and possibly the Series S as well will play Stalker 2 just fine. Not only that, I think Stalker 2 is the kind of game I would buy one of these systems to play. It's building up to be a system seller for me, like I did with this PS4 to play Red Dead Redemption 2 a few years ago. If you're on a PS4 or an Xbox One and you don't have a gaming PC, 
then Stalker 2 is the kind of game you buy a new console for. And since Legends of the Zone was just released, I, uh, it's opportune that I have both of them here because I got to experience what it's like on both 8th gen and 9th gen hardware, and I'm here to tell you all about it. As a precedent in terms of porting goes to Legends of the Zone, the original Call of Duty was too much for the 6th generation of consoles, so they got alternate versions of Call of Duty, like this. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1, which is fantastic, but clearly scaled down compared to the original. But again, this game was excellent, mostly because an appropriate game was made for the appropriate hardware. The original Call of Duty had to wait until the 7th generation to be ported on consoles, and while its PC-centric features were preserved, their cracks did show when playing on the PS3 and Xbox 360. Inventory management and loading up saved games, for example, didn't translate very fluidly, but the overall experience was transferred fairly well and was finally opened up to the comfort of the console, and that is pretty much the exact same deal we get with Stalker Legends of the Zone. This is not a remaster, it is simply a port of the original PC game onto 8th gen consoles, but obviously they run on 9th gen hardware as well, with a nice boost to resolution and frame rate. My Series X runs at a super crisp, clean, and fluid 4K 60fps. My PS4 Pro seems to be upscaling a 1440p picture to 4K, but I'm not Digital Foundry, so I'm not 100% sure. There's just more aliasing visible. But the image does look fine. The key difference between the two is frame rate. 30 FPS is what we're looking at on 8th gen. The difference in frame rate might be impacting how sound comes through in the audio engine that the console version uses, because gunfire on PS4 outputs a bit more choppy than the Xbox Series X. However, I'm going to point you in the direction of Tommy. He made a video on all of the differences between the PC release and the console releases, and it goes much more in depth than I will in this video. His video is longer and his jokes aren't as good as mine, but it's a good time over there. Let him know I sent you. But other than that, we're looking at very similar graphics for both, which appears to match maximum settings on PC, except in Call of Pripyat, where significantly less grass is being rendered in some areas. Now, Legends of the Zone is a new build for each of the three games, so there are noteworthy changes. For instance, the field of view has been expanded. You get a wider field of view on consoles than you did on the original games on PC. We have plenty of trophies and achievements, and many of them are done quite thoughtfully with humor and lore in mind. I said come in! Don't stand there! The cinematics have been seemingly re-rendered in 4K. I know a fella who makes stalker trailers who's going bananas over that one. Check him out too and say hi for me. These cutscenes look crystal clear and it's great. And finally, the one where most changes seem to have been applied is derussification. Uh, stalker is made by GSC Game World in Ukraine, which was originally exported in the Russian language to CIS countries. Which is normal, like Guerrilla Games is Dutch, and they export their games in English. Imagine if it were called... Horizon Verboden Westen. What are you gonna call that when most English speakers can't even say Chipotle correctly? Chipotle. Don't worry, I can't say Worcestershire correctly either. But because of the role that the Russian government has given the Russian language as essentially a weapon being used to wage war against Ukraine, this language has been removed from the game, aside from a good number of older voice lines. So, names of stalkers around the zone are going to be using Ukrainian spelling, locations are going to be using Ukrainian spelling, uh, even the names of the games themselves. Places like Yanov, Agroprom, Chernobyl, Pripyat have been spelled to reflect the Ukrainian language spelling and pronunciation. Reading in English, it's still very similar. Yanov, Chernobyl, Pripyat, with Ahroprom being a bit different. And another change was that it has been made clear and obvious that the ruble being used in the zone is the Soviet ruble, not the Russian one. You'd be surprised with how many Russophiles and Vatniks in my comments claim that Stalker is Russian and part of Ruski Mir because it has rubles and because it was in Russian. Removing the Russian language is a way for GSC to assert their ownership of Stalker, and I'm all for it. 
Another change that's a bit more charming is that the original Ukrainian version was the only one to feature non-stop energy as the energy drink in the game, but in Legends of the Zone, we all get non-stop now, and uh, that's kind of refreshing. Oh, and uh, before I forget, grass shadows work now. So, how do the games play on console? Quite well and mostly stable. They translate to consoles better than I thought they would, that's for sure. There's a lot of adjustment available for aiming, and I insist that you spend a few minutes playing with the settings. But shooting with a controller makes firefights feel more tense for me, in some for some reason. As in, with a mouse, I can smoke a group of bandits, a pack of pseudo-dogs, with relative ease, but playing with a controller made encounters a bit more challenging in some instances, especially when there's a pack of dogs chasing you. That's always a frantic experience, don't get me wrong, but on console I felt absolutely helpless, just like most stalkers would be. So I was humbled a few times by my lack of skill with a controller, and I'd need more work and experience to master gunfighting again, which is a good thing for me. But otherwise, it's the same stalker that we know and love. You'll have to constantly make decisions, you'll be artifact hunting, duty will still keep telling you to Buzz off, stalker. We don't let every loser go through. Buzz off, stalker. We don't let every loser go through. Buzz off, stalker. We don't let every loser go through. Buzz off, stalker. We don't let every loser go through. Oh, you are friend of Barkeep! Why you didn't say so? Please come in, Bled. Aside from inventory and PDA management being a bit fiddly, it's not bad at all. I expected bad, but this is pretty serviceable. But a downside is that you can't walk and manage these at the same time anymore. And as far as I know, there's no quick save. So you have to save manually. But this is something that I can do faster on a controller anyway, so it's not a bad trade-off. And yes, there are bugs. Not many, but there are some. I've gotten a couple of crashes and one soft lock in completing all three games, and that's been it so far. Not perfect, but certainly not bad. Stalker has found its place in the console space, and it's kept its pace and arrived with grace. But you may ask, there is one more task. What will be the situation with mods? We'll see. It sure looks like we're gonna get mod support, a good way to keep yourself updated is following Spartan Mosey's Stalker 2 news page on Twitter. But if you ask me, don't expect standalone games like Anomaly to arrive on your console. That's probably a good thing. Like, the more I play Stalker, the more I like vanilla. My favorite Call of Pripyat mod is a grass extension mod. It just renders grass <laughs> at further distances and expands your field of view. Like, th those are my two favorite mods for Call of Pripyat. And I know the Series X, for example, would probably run them perfectly fine. But I know also that 8th gen wouldn't. So maybe we can get some texture and sound mods to fix uh, those hiccups. But if you want anything more than that, like total conversion mods on console, I, like Gunslinger, I, I, don't, I wouldn't hold my breath. And I have nothing else to say.